Hey everyone, so do you ever feel like you get off to a great start? You're ganking, you're picking up kills, counter jungling, just in control. Eventually, you take some towers, you grab some objectives, then things just stall. You've got Stuart off in the side lane trying to split push with no vision, Betty's sitting mid wanting to A ram and share a farm for 30 minutes, and Ronaldo is off spamming Baron despite the fact that he's a support who hasn't purchased a single control ward all game. Oh, and your ADC, Chaz? He had a bit of a rough lane phase, so he already tabbed out to start complaining on Reddit about how weak his role is and how League was only good in Season 2. Meanwhile, you're having an identity crisis wondering how the hell you're going to rally the team and lead them to victory. So, which teammate do you join, and how do you force around the correct game plan while also adapting to the team around you? Today, we'll be solving this problem for you by analyzing games from Gold Elo, showing you exactly where average players go wrong and directly comparing it to what challengers and pros do to finish strong. If you're sick of losing games that you feel like you should have won, then this video is for you. Let's get going. But first, we want to quickly mention that this is just one of 800 epic guides over at skillcap.com, which are part of over 100 courses designed to help you improve and fast. You can input your current rank before signing up for the long-term plan to see where we think you'll climb to. If you don't reach that rank while actively using Skillcapped, you'll be eligible for a full refund. So there's zero risk. So be sure to check us out after this guide. But for now, let's cover our mid-game missions. First up, mission number one is to stick with strength. Playing around your strong teammates is something we hammer home in a lot of our jungle videos, but we continue to see junglers in our community lose game after game by not doing this, so we will continue to drive it home. Mission number two is to correctly utilize objectives to snowball the game. There's currently a lot of debate among high elo players regarding just how important objectives are to succeeding in solo queue. However, if you correctly understand how to set up around objectives, you can gain tremendous value just from forcing your opponents to make difficult, low information decisions. Also, remember that this is a mid game guide, not a lane phase guide. The objective value debate really stems from lane phase, when farming is more important, there are more ganks available, etc. In the mid game, there's rarely much else of value to do, so the importance of setting up around objectives is far less debatable. And finally, mission number three is to avoid even fights whenever possible. Of course, you won't always have control over which fights your team chooses, but we'll cover some ways that you can help ensure that your team has the advantage as much as possible. With all that said, let's jump into some low elo examples from within our community. In this first clip, we join with a gold elo echo. His team is slightly ahead as his top laner, Kled, takes first tower, giving him a sizable 1k gold lead over Garen, despite not having the best score. In the mid lane, Katarina also has a very large lead in gold, XP, and CS. In bot, Ezreal holds a small lead as well. But Clegg quickly overextends in top lane, getting Lee, who is seen heading back into his jungle very low. What would be your move in this situation? If you said Rift Herald or Krugs, those are both solid options. Herald is almost certainly a safe take due to Lee's HP and the fact that both mid and top are pushed. There is some risk that he gets collapsed on since he is outnumbered on this side of the map, but it's quite unlikely. And Herald is a fantastic objective to have at this point in the game, where you're trying to finish off the last outer tower so that you can start controlling the enemy jungle. Anyway, let's see what our gold echo does here. He starts by moving into the enemy jungle, greeting for the Lee Sin, which pretty quickly goes terribly as Garen rotates from top, eventually leading to both his and Katarina's deaths. Alright, obviously that went terribly, and this is a perfect example of missions 1 and 3 in action. For mission 1, his top laner with his 1k gold lead was dead. But you might be thinking that he still fought with his Katarina, who was super strong, right? Well, not really. She was very clearly trying to recall multiple times before Echo engaged. This is a great indication for you, as the jungler, that your teammate has gold to spend, especially when they are almost full on health as Katarina was here. The fact that Kat was sitting on 2k gold lead here means that her gold lead on LeBlanc is almost non-existent for all practical purposes. This play in the enemy jungle actively avoids all the strengths Echo's team has going for them right now, giving over 700 gold in shutdowns in the process. Had Echo taken the Herald and waited for Katarina to recall, he could have used Shelly mid lane to break the tower, at which point he and Kat could roam bottom while LeBlanc is stuck holding mid for an insanely easy gank or dive, and likely the last outer tower as well. 
So this is just a reminder to never take even or disadvantaged fights as you move into the mid game when your team has the lead. You have the control to only take winning fights by playing with your strong laners and pushing out waves. Anyway, moving on, moments later we see our gold Echo committing yet another massive mistake as he arrives to Dragon after it has already spawned, jumps into clear vision, and gets one shot. This is a huge failure for mission 2. Instead of turning this Dragon spawning into an opportunity for his team to get farther ahead, he throws the last of his team's lead as they lose the following fight and blue team secures the Dragon. Ok, so trying to clear this pink ward is what got him killed, so let's jump to the moment that this pink was placed and take a look. Alright, here we have the frame that Lee Sin placed this ward into the pit. As you can see, the dragon is already alive while Echo is just now coming from base. Clad and Katarina just killed LeBlanc mid, and the enemy bot lane is stuck under their tower. So not only does the red team have a 5v4 around dragon, but they have priority in both nearby lanes. Had Echo been at the objective early, rather than late, he could have easily forced a winning play in the enemy jungle with vision. They just have such a huge advantage in the area if he's there. And notice how Lee is placing the blue team's first vision on Dragon after it has already spawned. This is incredibly common in low elo, and this is why you want to place your vision 15 to 30 seconds before the objective spawns. That way, when your opponents react to the objective spawn late and go to place their vision, you can see them coming and make easy picks. So all of that is to say that instead of throwing at this pink ward like our gold echo did, he could have actually used the placement of this ward to snowball the game even more had he been in position instead. Alright, let's talk about failures to set up an objective some more here with a gold Zac approaching a soon to spawn dragon. What do you think Zac should do right now to set up his team for success? The correct answer, for sure, is to catch and push the mid wave out. But in the Echo clip, we said that he needed to grab vision around Dragon, so why is this different? Well, in the Echo clip, both nearby lanes already had pressure. With waves already moving toward the blue side of the map, that was going to pull the other team to those lanes to catch the waves. This means that your team can very safely move forward with a numbers advantage to secure vision. But Zack's team is being pushed back in both mid and bottom, so if he tries to move into the enemy jungle to place vision, Cinder will go mid to catch the wave while MF goes bot to do the same. This will leave him in a 1v4 or 2v4 if Morgana joins him. And this brings us to the very clear steps required for mission 2. First, you need to have mid prio. Ideally, you would have side lane priority near the objective as well, but mid is the essential one. Then, you use mid prio to establish vision around the objective, at which point you can finally look for picks around or just take the objective if the enemy team doesn't come. Anyway, let's see what happens when Zack ignores this crucial rule, jumping into a fight that was clearly completely disengaged already. His engage fails, and Annie flanks, resulting in a disastrous 1 for 3 fight and a lost dragon. Had Zack taken the time to push out mid, Syndra would have joined them at dragon while Annie caught the wave mid, leading to a 4v3 fight rather than the 3v4 that he forced earlier on. To drive this point home, let's check in with one of our challenger consultants smurfing in diamond. His top and mid lanes both are absolutely dominating their matchups, while bot lane is struggling and a bit behind. Viz is currently ganking bot while GP is just returning the lane after basing. What do you think Graves will do after finishing blue? If you said push out mid before moving to Herald, you're absolutely right and catching on. Again, you'll always want mid prio before committing to an objective so that you have vision on the enemy and force them into clearing. And with Fizz in the bottom lane, Graves is the only one who can catch and push this wave, which he does. He sees Olaf bottom and knows that he can very safely solo Herald without any other steps required. With Herald secured, what's the next move for our challenger smurf? In a truly shocking revelation, a mighty twist of fate, we see Graves go mid and push the wave while pinging the dragon. Now we do see Graves just continue to pressure the tower here because somehow no one is contesting him, but his original plan was just to clear the wave then grab drag. In this game, we once again see our challenger smurf, this time in gold, clearing out mid lane before rotating to the herald, which they are able to easily secure with great vision of the area. He then moves top, seeing that the wave is crashing into the tower and finds a successful lane gank from there, made even better by Blitz's roam, allowing them to easily secure the tower. At this point, what do you think his next move should be, remembering that he still has the Herald? Okay, 
even though it might seem tempting to push for tier 2 top tower with 2 dead and herald, we're actually going to see our challenger player recall after helping with the next wave. Lee runs straight to mid, shoving 2 waves and dropping herald to take mid tower instead of top tier 2. He then moves directly into the enemy jungle, running into Kindred and helping to establish some vision before finally heading to Drag. Notice how, by the time Dragon spawned, right here at 1817, he already had mid priority and a ward in the enemy jungle. This is just a perfect, clear example of a challenger player attempting to execute on mission 2. However, we do have a couple of issues here that are a product of being in gold elo. First off, Annie isn't here yet but she had traded kills with Kai'Sa in the bot lane, so she won't be either, making this not a huge deal. More importantly though, his team's vision has been taken out and they're completely in the dark. This is largely a product of his Blitzcrank just not understanding how to create vision control around an objective. Earlier, we saw him come from base and place one of his wards on the dragon itself, which is just an abysmal, complete waste of a ward. Blitz also left base with over 100 gold and no control ward, used his sweeper suboptimally, and for some reason placed his final of 3 wards here? Beyond that, with the whole team basing shortly before the dragon was set to spawn, Lee is the only one on his team who left the base with a control ward. So all of that to say, vision control is unfortunately a team effort largely reliant on your support. So you will not always be able to pull off this step seamlessly. Now, keeping in mind our missions for this video, if you were Lee, what would you do right now? Okay, so we see Lee move down into the tribe rush, looking for a pick onto Kaisa, who we saw rotate into Dre. And this is a great example of mission 3 in action, avoiding even fights. If Lee moves to fight at the dragon pit, it's going to be a 5v5 with Kaisa's ability to join from range. At this point in the game, and really with any even remotely close game, a 5v5 teamfight is a total coin flip. So our challenger smurf wanted to pick Kaisa, then look to fight over the dragon with a 5v4 advantage. But in our continued series of gold elo woes, his team engages without him, their strongest member, and he's forced to respond. Now they do end up winning the fight, but 5v5s like this are an incredibly easy way to throw a lead, which is why Lee tried so hard to avoid it by pushing in mid, warding the jungle, and trying to make a pick beforehand. You just won't always be able to control what happens in your games. League is full of variables. But the more often you take the correct steps in the mid game, the more likely you are to be rewarded as he was earlier with his Herald play. And just to touch on mission 3 a bit more since we haven't really talked about it much this video, we just want to show you how readily gold players are taking not only even fights, but clearly disadvantaged ones. In this example, a gold Elise, whose team has a clear advantage, forces a 2v2 in the bottom lane against the only strong member on the enemy team, which results in a 1 for 2 and 2 more kills on Tristana, who goes on to hard carry the game. Instead, Elise could have been with her strengths on the map in mid and top, calling back to mission 1, where she could have dove top tower, potentially taking top tier 2, before moving for a free rift herald, leading to yet another tower in the future. So, when we say something that sounds as basic as only taking advantaged fights, you may scoff. But we've seen time and time again how readily average junglers force these plays, whereas our challenger smurf tried desperately to avoid just an even fight. When your team has the lead, has control, use it to push in waves, forcing opponents to respond, and use those moments to capitalize. So to wrap this all up, if you're ever feeling lost in the mid game, unsure of your next step. We encourage you to look at who is strong on your team and try to play around them, whether that means taking fights with them or simply warding for them so that they can split push safely. Then check which objective is up next. 30 seconds before it spawns, already be in the area and push mid as far in as you can if no one on your team is doing so. Use whatever wards or scryers blooms you have to get vision around it and either look for picks or take the objective if you can safely. And finally, no matter what, Avoid even odds fights whenever you possibly can. Use your winning lane or down towers to push up waves and find numbers advantages. Place deep vision so that you have all the information you need to make an informed engage. Before we wrap this up, if you enjoyed this guide, remember to check out our site if you're serious about improving at skillcap.com. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one as well. Thanks for watching.